Hey YouTube, here's Heiko. Today I'm not in my garage, but I'm in front of my computer uh, working on editing the second part of Airhead Alternator Repair. Uh, first video we looked into troubleshooting and today we're actually going to get into the part where we start taking things apart and we'll fix the alternator. Thanks for coming along. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you. To make life a little easier for my reassembly, I'm going to turn my motor engine so that my, uh, my trigger pin here, this one, lines up with the Hall effect sensor right there. Um, then I kind of have at least a rough idea what the timing needs to be. So I'm going to uh, lift the rear wheel off the ground, spin the motor until this one sits right over the little punch mark right there and then I will take it off so now I have uh, the rear wheel off the ground by just putting a jack stint under the axle I have it in high gear it's a little easier if you take the um, spark plugs out but that's not that important right now and now you just bump your wheel until we have that one nose that I, I marked it with a Sharpie. Sorry for the shaking motorcycle. Um, I marked it with a Sharpie. And now I'm going to line it up right with that punch mark. There's a little uh, center punch dimple in here. And that's perfect. So now I know that um, my engine is more or less timed and now i can take this rotor off without having to you know figure this all out again of course we have to check timing once it's all back together and probably adjust it a little bit so now i took the center uh, the, the wheel down to the ground now the wheel is pretty much holding the engine in its position and now i can take this loose one more time you got to make sure that your battery ground is disconnected or else um, you might cause a short circuit and then destroy your charging system all right so i'm going to take this loose here like if i can there you go yeah so bolt is loose Um, so we have this all disconnected, this is all disconnected, this one connects to the stator, our little ignition doodad here, I guess we have to take that off too. So we have this whole terminal block loose and now we just need to take the three um, stator housing bolts out and then we should be already free, uh, free and clear. Well, when you slide off the brushes, just got to be careful that you don't break stuff here. Uh, we're just going to slip it off to the front, you know. All right, so taking the three bolts loose. There you go. Sorry for the terrible lighting. As you guys know, I am not very good at making YouTube videos. But at least I want to share my things here with you. Oh, bolt number one coming out. Number two. And make sure I don't drop everything on the pavement here. So. Sounds like someone's coming down the stairs. Or maybe not. 
All right, so three bolts out, all the wires out of the way. And now we're just gonna wiggle this out of location if we can. There you go, oh, yep, 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 oh, brushes all out. I actually have a new set of brushes that I will most likely install during this uh, repair here. Unless the, the, the ones that are in here, they look pretty long, to be honest. We'll see. Maybe we replace them, maybe we won't. Definitely we'll clean all the contacts here, all the spade connectors, they need to be pristine. And then um, what I usually do, the, the uh, female connectors, I kind of bend them together so they really put a nice strong pressure on, on all the connections. All right, and uh, securing the stator over here, out of the way. So, and now we need to grab a tool. I go and grab my um, rotor removal tool. So now I have my removal tool here, uh, made in Germany. If you want to know the part number, I uh, can't, I don't know if you guys can see that. It's 123600N. And then this was made in 06 of 2000. This slides right in there and then you thread it on. Um, might want to put some lubrication on the threads. Maybe just a drop of some sort of thin oil because you don't want anything to seize while you are removing this rotor. Um, the other tool that you might need is a nice big flathead screwdriver and uh, you will need that one to stop your uh, flywheel from spinning or your motor from spinning so that you can actually take this loose. So I'll stick a screwdriver. Oh, this is too big of a screwdriver. Um, stick a screwdriver into the timing hole where you usually um, would check your timing and kind of brace it against the housing. So we're going to turn this way. Okay, so like that. And then I have a 13 millimeter ratcheting. That's the right direction. And then you just turn it until the rotor comes loose. It, it's uh, So the connection is done by means of a taper. So it's a taper fit. There is no key in there. Oh, now we're spinning the crank, so that's great. Oh, man. oh, there it is. It's already loose. <laughs> that's all it takes. So a female taper, a male taper, they are machined so precisely that they slide right into each other and then almost fuse together and the bolt that goes in into the end of the rotor here really only uh, uh, applies a little bit of some pressure you got to make sure that both surfaces are completely grease free and clean um, also no burrs no scratches same here you can if there is maybe a scratch on the end of your crankshaft you can polish that out a little bit but i would be really careful using maybe like two or three thousand grit sandpaper or some emery cloth and the inside just avoid damaging it man this looks really rough this is like as if it was rubbing against the stator that's brutal and it smells smells burnt so the the rotor has a little bit of some electrical melting burning smell to it all right let's go over to the bench one more time you know what they say never touch a running system right just a, a week or two ago, I actually had uh, cleaned the commutator. Huh, doesn't look like it, huh? And uh, I had checked the length of the brushes just to make sure we're good on that. And because I constantly had this frick, flickering um, generator light, and the outside really looks like it had contact with the stator. So this is what it's supposed to look like no contact and this one looks this wow okay here let me get the stator so here's the stator and uh 
even this one, let me turn on light, has a little bit of some traces of contacting. So when, uh, when they developed this, uh, this alternator, they actually changed the diameters. So over the years, the rotor got smaller in diameter and the stator housing and winding got bigger. So the later models actually have a larger housing, which doesn't fit into my motor. And uh, I guess they did that because of heat expansion so that the rotor doesn't contact the stator, uh, which this one obviously did. That's rough. Good thing it's relatively easy to take that apart. So um, we tested this, so I'm going to put this aside. But um, just to be thorough, I'm just going to give you another comparison here. So we're on ohms. Um, this one here should be 3.4 around there, 3.9, okay. And this one is absolutely dead, nothing. Okay, and um, I have my trusty caliper. So this one here is a 73 millimeter. And this one here is a 73 and a little bit. So, hmm. The problem is with my motorcycle, I really don't know who put it together, what kind of parts were used. Let's see if this is the same part number. Um, there is a 3018 and there's a 3018, but that's not the usual. Maybe that's a Bosch part number. Hmm. This doesn't even look like a Bosch part. Here's a Bosch sign right there next to my thumb. And this one doesn't have it. So, huh, I have no idea. So we're gonna be happy with the one that we have. I'm gonna clean the commutator again, just gently with some steel wool maybe. Uh, blow this all off. Don't use any chemicals. The copper windings in there, they are all just coated with some lacquer to insulate them. So you don't want to get there, get any chemicals on it. So this is for sure a Bosch part and this might be something else. Yeah, good, great. Now this is actually in pretty good shape. So the commutator doesn't have any sharp lips here. Um, to clean up the commutator, I just usually use, this is a super fine Scotch-Brite. Uh, I think it uh, equals a thousand grid. And then I just put it on there and then give it a, a couple rubs. And that cleans up the, the copper slip rings. This is already clean enough, I would say. And then the brushes, they can eat their own way into this. And yeah, we're going to degrease um, in there and on the end of the crankshaft. Yeah, yeah let's, let's do an interference test. I wish I could just um, remove the brushes for a second here. Well, let's see. I'm just going to stick it in there. If there's any rubbing going on. Now, if the, the crankshaft and the, the housing, the housing here has a machine surface and the timing cover on the engine has the same, the mating surface. So this is supposed to be all concentric lining up with each other. And uh, the rotor and the stator are definitely not supposed to touch each other. This is a pretty tight fit though, I gotta say. On uh, Snowbump's webpage, I read all the measurements of all the different versions of stators. And you know, let's see if we can measure the inside diameter. 
So we know the rotor is 73 millimeters, and this one here is 74. I have a couple more of those. Let's get them over here. Maybe we can make sense of all of this. So this one here, so this one is the one that we did, just took off. Part number is 1125883. This one is also 1125883. And so let's put this over here. This is definitely the one we might want to use. And this one. And then I have another one. This has 1125883. So they are all the same. Um, the housing, the mating surface of the housing, that's kind of the deciding factor whether or not it will fit into your motorcycle. So this here is a 107 millimeter. This one is uh, 105, so this is the older one. And the one that we took out is a 105. So yeah, the 107 is a newer version of this. So uh, probably also diff has different uh, resistance in the, in the windings here. So this is from a newer motorcycle. And I have a, a bunch of parts that I got with my purchase that are from an 84 RT so this might be that and then this one really looks ugly so the the only alternative part we would have is a pretty ugly looking uh, stator which eh, it would work you know we could make it work make it clean this also looks like it had some something rubbing against it. Anyways, we're going to use the stator that came from the motorcycle. I might clean off the inside a little bit. Just deburr it, de, de nasty it. And uh, I will leave the rotor well enough alone. Okay. I'm just uh, cleaning the inside, lapping it with this thousand grit scotch bright pad. Looks clean. And then I'm going to uh, use a rag. So I'm not spraying any chemicals on it. I'm just going to spray some uh, brake clean on a rag, stick this in here and degrease it properly. Break clean on a paper towel. Let's take one more corner here. And do it one more time. Looks good. Nothing coming off anymore. It looks pretty clean in there too. All right, let's go over to the bike. On this side, same concept. Uh, usually what people do is they replace this seal here when they're in here. But I think we're fine for now. I'm pretty sure we're fine. Um, this here is the surface where the seal ring runs on. So you want to make sure this is also nice and clean. It has no groove. Um, we're going to leave it alone. I don't have a seal ring anyways. And I really want to write and not wait for parts. So we're just going to clean up the taper. Couple, couple scrubs so there's no rust on it or discoloration or smear dirt. And then we're going to take our trusted paper towel, give it a light spray of brake clean, take the wires out of the way.
and take this and clean it up. Let's do another corner. I, I use the one that's non-chlorinated because uh, it's not quite as stinky. It might not clean quite as well, but it's also not as aggressive to other surfaces. So that's that. Um, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. This feels pretty good. I can see that a seal ring was running on this, but I can't feel it, so that's good enough. And then um, I'm kind of tempted to put a little bit of some assembly grease on there before I push this back into the seal ring. Okay, let me let me see. Since we are putting a new rotor into an old seal ring, I'm going to use what's called assembly goo, which is just like a like a grease. Yeah, I'll show you the. That's for a transmission has light tag, and I'm just going to put ever so slightly on my finger, and then rub it onto the sealing surface here of of the rotor. Since this is not the same that we took off. Oh, you know what? Actually, that's a good idea. Maybe I should look at the old one that we took off. Yeah, the seal surface is also just fine on that one. So uh, we have the seal surface clean, no grooves. I can't feel anything. And a little bit of assembly goo. Just like, it's, it's, it's like a surface coating like very minimally and you don't want to get it in the inside of the taper of course and uh, then now let's make sure we don't have any greasy stuff on the inside and now <laughs> we're just gonna Slide it right on. And as we slide it on, I guess we're going to wiggle it a little bit. Like so. Look, and now I can already feel how the taper is catching. We're definitely kind of jumping in the gun, or I am. I definitely want to put some new brushes in here. I just did a quick little comparison in length. Um, So when I when I push the brushes in all the way on the inside they're sitting roughly around here. See the little black mark there? And now I can take the new brush and hold it next to it and I can tell that the new brushes are much longer. I bought the ones that have uh, little eyelets on the end that just get bolted onto the um, brush carrier right there and there instead of solder. Uh, this is just a little easier on the side of the road. So now we're going to continue. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to uh, take the old brushes out and uh, unsolder those connections because I don't want leftover wire. Then we're going to take a really close look at the brush holders because this is some sort of Bakelite, plastic, whatever, um, and they can wear out and then the, the brushes are not really supported anymore. So let's, let's unsolder this real quick. If I, here's a wire tangle right behind you guys. Oh my goodness gracious. Don't drop it on the ground, Heiko. Not. Oh, here we go. Now I got it. Whew. Okay. I think we got everything out. Just a little solder left on here, which, if we can, we can suck it out here with my little, my little solder sucker. Doesn't work. Oh, 
but that's good enough. Okay, now the next one. We got it. Okay, some brushy brush. Tons of those gun cleaning brass brushes. They're very inexpensive and they have so many uses. And when one gets too grimy, dirty, then you just grab a new one. Good for cleaning electrical contacts. And it doesn't really damage any, any of the metal surfaces. Gets the, the terminals here nice and shiny. All right, and then let's just take a peek. So the, the cable always runs there, always towards the inside, towards the center, okay. I'll pull out the, the brush here, if I can. Maybe we need to grab a little screwdriver, that one, and uh, hold the, the spring up. Why can't I not pull it out the other way? Hmm. Maybe we can take the spring off. Can we do that? Yeah. And then we can pull it out. Oh, I guess the the, the brushes only come out one way. Now the second one, the spring is not as easily taken off, so I'm just, I just moved it over to the side, okay, and now I guess, let's, let's take a close look here, so you want to make sure that this plastic is not completely wallowed out, especially here at the, uh, at the bottom, towards the towards the uh, commutator and then uh, I can use some um, okay we can use some electronic cleaner to just spray that off a little bit before we put the new brushes in there. I don't think I sh I'm going to put any kind of Okay, so that's good enough. Now we just have to manipulate the spring back on here. Okay, looks good. All right, and now the new brushes. I think they're identical. We just have to, again, bring the, the springs out of the way. I don't want to take the spring off necessarily because so like so maybe a little over to the side like this and then uh, the connection the wire connection to the inside to the middle of that plastic holder like so
drop in and spring on top. Oh yeah, we wanted to make a short length comparison. You can see there's quite a bit of meat missing. That's like a quarter of an inch. Other one, uh, this one is a little longer, but hey, we have fresh ones, so let's use them. All right, now I'm going to do the same with the other spring here. If I can, if I can. Over to the side, out of the way, without taking it all the way off. And then, again, the connection to the plastic. And then, drop in, like so, and the spring, ping. And now, we just need to connect them, like, like, um, would you say, we do, this first, this on top, and then the little washer, and then the little nut. Is that good? Does that sound like a good idea? No? Let's do some brushy brush. So we get some good, clean Contacts. And that's an eight millimeter. See that I put the terminal kind of like at a forty five. Okay, that's as good and tight. And nothing is interfering, nothing is blocking when the brushes come out a little further. All right, now this one. Let's do some cleaning. And then, oh yeah, I remember this one was bent a little bit. So, this one on top, then the little washer, and then the little nut. Okay, then. Also, again, 45 degree angle, so nothing is interfering with the cable there. I kind of like it. They have a little bit of uh, uh, insulation on the on the wires there. The the ones that are soldered on, they don't have that. And uh, you know, if those little wires touch ground, that would probably not be a good one. Tight, tight. All right, and then let's look around here. I kind of want to scrub this off a little bit, but it's magnetism. It's not supposed to touch anything. And uh, there is, in some spots here, there is definitely some witness of, uh, some witness, some evidence of some rubbing. Yeah, let's just take uh, that gray pad that we used earlier. And scrub around but you don't want to touch the windings they are coated you don't want to get the coating off so let's just do a little bit and we definitely need to blow this out later
yeah still some evidence of some rubbing here but uh I hope the new rotor or the newer rotor doesn't do the same. <sighs> you know, heat expansion is difficult. <sighs> okay, I think we're good. The rest here is just dust. This is the uh, 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 machine surface that interfaces with your timing cover. So you got to make sure that that at least sits in the groove nicely. Here's a little bit of some rust on it. A little bit is good. A lot of rust. But we know that the windings all work. So nothing is damaged, even though it's rusty. Okay, so we have new brushes. That no lubrication needed. All the other contacts here actually look pretty decent. Okay, shall we put it back in the bike? So, as you can see, we have the rotor back on, right? Usually in a normal circumstance, you would put the bolt back in the middle. I think there's a bolt and a washer. Uh, but in our case, I can't do that because I have to um, first put the housing over with the brushes. And then I have to put my uh, ignition rotor back on there. For sure, we want to make sure that um, these mating surfaces that interfaces with the stator housing are clean and have no burrs and stuff. All right, and now we're going to just slip that over. I'm going to try to push the those wires here. They always want to be right in the middle as if they're the most important. Okay, um, so like what, like that. Yeah, I think so. And then we need to push the brushes out of the way. Like so. And we're going to make sure that we line the screw holes up more or less. The brushes are on the uh, slip rings. I already forgot what it's called. We just talked about this earlier. And then our three screws. One. Two. And I bet there is some sort of torque spec for this. And I will go and look that up real quick. Yeah, you guys wait. All right, so I grabbed my, the biggest manual that I have is my trusted climber BMW. Um, and it says 23 to 27 Newton meters for the mounting bolt of the rotor and 4.7 Newton meters for the stator housing. I don't have a newton meter torque wrench that goes down that far but they also have inch pounds so we're going to use 35 inch pounds okay 35 i don't think uh Loctite is necessary for this. 
I'm a little nervous about the 35 inch ponds to be honest. It looks like it just seeded a little more. And my torque wrench here is also not the loudest. I think that's good. All right, we got that. Um, what would keep us from putting those two back on here? And uh, we need to put my ignition pickup back on here. I've decided since uh, when this gets installed, you omit the uh, wave washers that I'm going to put some blue Loctite on this time. Just a little drop. So I'm using... Uh, Blue Loctite 245. See. Two little uh, screws. Oh, they actually have a um, lock washer. So I will not put Loctite on it. I think just a set of lock washers will suffice. Now we just need the right size. Oh. Yeah, lock washer is just fine. I don't want to overdo things. And then next time I have to take it apart, I'm, I'm like struggling here with stripping stuff. All right, so one bolt in. And these ones I'm not going to torque, I'm just going to tighten. Good and tight, but not too tight because they're like M5. So tiny little suckers, and we don't want to overdo it. And they are pretty much set in location. Uh, there's not much adjustment here. I can't really wiggle that all that far, so we're just going to tighten it up how it comes. It's a Hall effect sensor, so there's no touching of the trigger and the sensor going on anyways so like that and like that then those two three these are all new wires so i i just replaced the entire wiring harness plus all this extra stuff here um so that's good and one more up here That's good. And now we need to put the uh, trigger wheel back on there. In this case, I will... Oh, we're at OT, huh? Uh, why are we at OT? Okay, I'm gonna spin my my crankshaft just so that I'm back at my S timing mark in my timing window. Um, so here in this case, it's the original bolt, just has uh, the trigger and a few shims, but they omitted the wave washer, and uh, I just don't wanna risk anything so I'm gonna give it one little drop of blue Loctite and I'm pretty certain I will be able to get that loose later in life I hope at least
wrong, wrong size. So what did I say? 23 through 27, right? So this is 20, 24. Let's do 24 Newton meters. And I'm going to use my So the rotor is threaded, then you will see it slide through, and then it goes into the crankshaft. There you go. And then, as I mentioned last time, not last time, I kind of pre-time the crank so that my, my crankshaft sits at the timing mark, and then I can line up the little knob here that I marked with a sharpie with a timing mark here on the Hall effect sensor and then we're pretty close in timing so that when I have to do a timing adjustment later I'm already really close oh, okay. I'm making the same mistake again I need to Lock the the crank from spinning the screwdriver in the timing hole. We just stick a screwdriver in here so that we're not spinning the crankshaft while we're tightening this. Yeah, I guess I would have to have a, a third hand to put this wrench in here. But uh, I think once we have it torqued to spec, I can still, you know what, we're going to spin it that way a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to tighten it to 23 to 27 newton meters. Click. Come on. Click. And now I'm going to grab my trusted wrench and just spin it the same direction I just tightened the bolt. Like so. And now we should be relatively close to timing already. So now let's think about it. We have new brushes in there. We have those three bolts tightened down with my inch pound torque wrench to 35 inch pounds. And we're just going to go around one more time. Yeah. Feels really weird. But that's what it is. You know what? I'm going to put a, a normal Allen key on there. And just, yeah, that feels good. Okay, that feels good. Okay, that feels good. So then we have all the wires back on there. Um, now I'm going to stick a uh, feeler gauge in there just to make sure we're not too close to the sensor. All this, this is tightened up, this is tightened up. All the cables are back connected the way they're supposed to. This one here is a little loose. There's a little terminal up there that's off less than perfect quality. It looks all pretty complete to me. Of course the cover is missing, the battery is not connected. We're going to do that next and hope for the best. Okay, but before I do that I want to put a 
Allen key on my diode board bolts to make sure that hasn't come loose. Okay, that feels good. This diode board uh, on my slash six here, the mounts are solid from the factory. They had a couple years where they made some airhead uh, diode board mounting location where there were rubber insulators in between and they would then eventually break. And then I guess the new aftermarket solution to that is putting solid mounts back in there. On the slash uh, six, it was solid all along. So that's all good. Those terminals are all back on there. Okay, battery connection. And then we're gonna check And then we're going to see if my generator light comes back on, which it probably will. Are you guys ready? Lights on? No? Who? Yes! Okay, so I have a generator light. So just like it's supposed to be, we have a generator light illuminated. We're not in neutral because I put it in high gear to spin my my rear wheel, right? Let me check on that real quick. Okay. Look at that now. I guess I'm gonna open the garage now, and then we're gonna see if she runs and if the alternator light turns off. We're neutral. belief uh, the timing is not dependent on having a warm engine it's just dependent on rpm uh, mine is electronic advance and uh, it shouldn't change unless the rpm goes up so it doesn't know the temperature all right let me get my timing light so i want to getting the simple one out i have a cheap one and an expensive one the expensive one is always in a case so let's put this on here smart person would now turn uh, disconnect the battery because I'm going to stick a wrench in there but uh, since I'm not smart I'm just gonna block the crank by putting a screwdriver into the fly flywheel and I'm gonna try to not touch anything all right guys and then I'm just gonna advance the timing a little bit by hand ever so slightly Okay, like that. You don't want to overdo it. Okay, now we're going to start it back up. Screwdriver out.
just noticed um, I don't want to burn my luggage. <laughs> Anyways, um, we're still a little on the late side, not much, just a, a smidge. So we're going to do the same thing, make sure we don't touch anything, and just advance a little bit like that. Both tools back out, everything out of the way. Maybe not quite perfect. It might be just a smidge past the point where we wanted it. So again, blocking wrench and just like so. And I'm gonna take the tools out. The battery is a little weak. From me riding. Of course, and now we're too late again. Okay, so I guess we have to massage this until we like it. Okay, everything out of the way. Okay, so now overnight the battery needs some charging and uh, I need to disconnect the battery one more time to put my front cover back on and that's it. So we, we just changed the burned out rotor. We put in uh, three brushes into the brush holder, um, unsoldered the old ones. So this is for sure dead as dead can be. I don't even know if I'm going to keep it or just throw it away. But yeah, so I think we have um, charging restored. My alternator light works phenomenally uh, just as it's supposed to. And uh, that's it. So if you guys like this video, if you like the, uh, I wouldn't want to call it instructional part because I'm just muddling through it. I'm not an expert. I mostly follow manuals online resources just like you guys. Um, I guess sometimes it just helps if someone shows it in front of camera, even if I make mistakes, then uh, you guys can blow up in the comment section. But at least uh, the, the beginners among us can see someone work through the same problem and analyze and fix it and you guys can follow along. I know the camera work is not the greatest. It's always either too far away, too close, too dark, too bright. Uh, the sound is probably terrible, but uh, that's all I can provide at the moment. You know, if my YouTube channel does well, uh, I might buy some better equipment, maybe even get myself a little microphone here, uh, but we'll see what happens. And uh, so for now, I have a fixed alternator and a, a little booklet that I showed you earlier. If you don't have that, this is definitely a book that I want to recommend. It's not expensive. Whoa, $25.95. Rick Jones, uh, classic boxer charging. One topic only. I like it. It has helped. And uh, yeah, now I guess my bike is fixed. I just got to get the battery back up I'm fully charged. I'm probably going to use my battery tender. And that's it. So please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care, guys. Bye.